On a hot summer's day, a room magically appeared. This was the Yes Man's overclocking chambers of secrets. Just like the Silicon Lottery, when one is to enter the chamber, there is no telling how one may come out. First time in, Brian was gifted with a benchmarking PC. His father, after seeing how lucky his son was, soon decided to take the chance as well. However, he unfortunately got in the lower echelon of the draw and turned out with a power that enabled him to focus on detail, but at the expense of looking quite terrible. You may be asking, what does this have to do with anything? Well, just like the Yes Man's overclocking chambers of secrets, this benchmark PC is a new concept for the channel. Hope you enjoyed that intro guys and welcome back to Tech Yes City. This is Brian coming to you guys today with a new PC that is going to help me in the quest for giving you guys the most consistent benchmarks possible. So without wasting any more of your time, let's take a look at the parts I have initially put in this PC and then of course run some benchmarks for you guys. Oh and also in case you're wondering, I originally did have a 280X which would have been a great apples to apples comparison, especially to the GTX 770, but unfortunately I got hosed on the deal. So I have to instead use the 7950, but let's see how far AMD's drivers have come versus Nvidia's. And yes, I did only test one card at a time, of course. Both cards in the rig are just for the B-roll.
is for both the benchmarks. I thought both cards honestly did pretty well. The 7950 did do a little bit better for its age. And this is a card that I got for 80 Australian dollars, which is about 60 USD. The GTX 770, I managed to get that for about 100 AUD or 75 USD. So it's all pretty relative, I guess. And both cards had to be cleaned and have their thermal paste replaced. Though when it comes down to it, I would actually prefer the 7950 with three gigabytes of VRAM over the GTX 770. As you can see with these games, the extra gigabyte of VRAM made a big difference. And this was only on some games medium, for example, on Dishonored 2. That GTX 770 was getting capped out there as opposed to the 7950, which was actually managing to run absolutely fine with the three gigabytes of VRAM. As for the 280X, I believe the VRAM on that card has just simply shat itself, so it doesn't work at all as soon as you install the drivers, oddly enough. Though on the Windows Basic Display Adapter driver, it works, since I do believe it doesn't recognize VRAM properly through that driver. Hence why I believe the video memory is faulty. Though that is just my guess, and I've already tried flashing the BIOS with a severely underclocked profile, and that still didn't work. So this thing is quite literally history. The person should have never have sold it as working fine, because it doesn't work fine at all. But anyway, that's the risk you are always going to get with used parts. Some scammer trying to offload and swindle his way out of $100. Such is life. There was for better news, the parts in this build, which a lot of them were sent out as build samples from Corsair and MSI. The 460X was probably the weakest link though. I much preferred the 570X as I thought that had a bit more room and everything was easier to work with. The 460X, however, was a bit of a hassle when it came to things like installing the power supply, reattaching covers, and also the cable management at the back was very minimal. And on top of that, I had to mount the H110's fans on top of the case. But that does look like a bit of awesome and they are very quiet. The RM850 power supply is really smooth and quiet and has a fan that spins down when the computer is in idle. And the 5.1 GHz overclock on the CPU is very aggressive considering it is in the dead heat of summer here in 30 degree plus temperatures. And that is supplied juiced by the best Z270 motherboard I have reviewed. That is the MSI Z270 Titanium, though it is very expensive, keep that in mind. So the benchmark PC is all good to go and up and running to give you guys some juicy comparisons, especially when another CPU and motherboard combo hits the channel. Anyway guys, that's about it for the Benchmark PC. If you like this video, then be sure to hit that like button and let me know in the comments section below, what was your favorite piece in this Benchmark PC? I personally love that triple slot cooler and also those H110 fans mounted on top of the case. It was different, looks cool, and it performs pretty well. And also I haven't branded this PC a name yet. I was thinking of calling it King Ding A Ling. Let me know what you think of that. And I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye. The yes man's overclocking chambers of secrets will be continued.